for uh, joining us uh, on this uh, topic. Um, my name is Anthony Barrow. I am a co-founder of a, a company called PowerDocs, and we're basically commercializing what we refer to as autonomous floating microgrids. These are platforms that are actually able to generate their own power, they store the power, and they distribute the power in situ anywhere in the aquatic space. Uh, we have many applications in many vertical markets, and I'm here to share with you uh, our vision where we uh, can see where marine infrastructure is heading to. So first of all, uh, I'd like to share with you some of the significant trends that are happening uh, in our industry, social and economically. Uh, as you all know, electric vehicles Adoption and commercialization is growing significantly, continues to grow. First company that announces that they're going to be uh, divesting from fossil fuels at the end of 2019 is Volvo. They're gonna be launching new platforms, uh, electric and hybrid. Uh, General Motors uh, is uh, along the same plans uh, up to uh, 2023. Uh, I don't have to tell you about Tesla, and just like Tesla, you have Audi, you have Volkswagen, you have Mercedes, you have Porsche, Toyota, Ford, Hyundai. You can probably associate yourself with any of these vehicles that uh, you're showing over here. And uh, it's uh, whether you like it or not, I think in the next 10 years, uh, we're going to be driving electric vehicles or electric hybrid. The same uh, trend is happening in the marine industry. Believe it or not, uh, electric marine propulsion uh, it is growing. Uh, it's a, it is a vibrant, uh, new emerging industry right now. It is projected to grow significantly, upwards of $20 billion uh, in, the, in the 2020s. You have large companies like Caterpillar, Man Diesel, Torquedo in Germany. In fact, Torquedo was recently bought out by uh, Another larger company is so looking to scale that up as well. Ocean Volt. So think about boating and pleasure uh, boats uh, coming into marinas uh, being electric and hybrid. Okay. So ask yourself, how can marine facilities service these customers? As a marina owner, the main problem that we face is that we have to keep customers. We need to retain customers, so we have to provide our facility as a destination. One way of doing it that is by considering upgrading our infrastructure that we have to be able to provide services to our customers. So we come in to the marina on an electric vehicle. We have electric vehicle charging stadium. Uh, we have floating pontoons that are very uh, passive and not producing anything for us. We can convert those pontoons into solar power microgrid facilities that all of a sudden provide a return investment for our infrastructure. Uh, that we don't get that right now. As you all know, renewable power is uh, significantly growing. Uh, pretty much everywhere in the United States, Europe is a big proponent of this. United Nations, a lot, of, a lot of plans are unfolding right now to transform uh, our power uh, industry, just like we transform the uh, you know telephone industry. We all have cellular phones now. Energy storage and resiliency. Uh, if you take a look at uh, at, at charts of recent events of what's happening in the Caribbean, in Texas, uh, even even in, uh, in Europe, Mallorca. I was up in Barcelona three weeks ago and they had the first hurricane uh, in, in, in many, many years. It's unheard of in, uh, in Spain. And so uh, all this activity in, in extreme weather uh, is really uh, asking for organizations and companies to really be conscious about what's happening in the environment because if we don't measure it, if we don't act proactively, how to, how to, how to manage and prepare
prepared for that, we, it's going to really impact our business. It's going to really impact our customers and our livelihood. So we should be asking ourselves, how are we going to be able um, to provide for the increased electric demand that is anticipated on marine facilities and marine infrastructures? Okay. So, you know, possible options over here, uh, power docks, we are actually transforming marinas, floating infrastructure into actual floating solar and microgrid facilities. It's the only infrastructure that can provide a return investment, not only to the business, but also be able to facilitate services for, for the marina customers. Uh, companies are adopting energy storage. Uh, you're gonna hear from uh, Prince uh, Power over here shortly. Uh, perfect example for deploying a small scale uh, energy storage in a large facility to be able to provide for power and resiliency in extreme weather conditions. Uh, we are fighting a big war right now internationally with sea pollution and microplastics. Um, don't have to tell you that pollution and trash really comes from mainland, it doesn't come from the ocean. Uh, it's really sad to travel to many parts of the world and uh, where you thought you were going to escape and, and reach fantasy and you get to the place and you actually see plastic floating and, and debris is very sad. Uh, worse is that, you know, we are, we are eating seafood. Um, when we buy from the marketplace, we buy a box of cereal and we buy a box of cereal because we're able to turn it back and see what the content is in the box of cereal. We go to the uh, seafood counter and we try to buy shrimp or any kind of a seafood. Do we really know what we're buying? Do we really know what we're getting from? Do we really know the water quality of that product where it came from? Uh, you'll be very surprised to find out uh, what's in it. IP remote sensing and monitoring. Very important right now for us to be able to remotely monitor all of our activities. So in buildings, they call it smart sensing, smart cities, lightings and things like that. In the environment, uh, if you're in the, in the agriculture farming industry, you really need to know what the water quality is of what you're raising so that you can ensure uh, a safe uh, a product. But not only that, but economically, you have the opportunity now to brand your product if you have some data that tells you, hey, water temperature, salinity, nitrogen, and so forth, so the highest quality of my product, and I can put a label in it, so it's probably certified, command a higher price as a small agriculture uh, farmer. <clears throat> so how can, how can marine facilities take advantage of technology today to be able to uh, provide more information proactively and be able to safeguard for um, unforeseeable events. Uh, some companies, like for example here in San Diego, you can see they are developing mechanical systems to actually help uh, collect trash 